So mostly what they do is hold summits. I think that right now the question is, do we all work for central bankers? That's what I want to address to our guest tonight. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? Jim, Jim Urio, you say we've got some downside here, a correction in the markets. Fine. But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? Aren't we all just counting on the fact that there's a Bernanke put, put and that we won't go any lower than, say, 5% uh, down from here? Of course we are, because if we look at the economic data, there's nothing to get excited about in that. So we, you know, yesterday we saw some reluctance for the Bernanke Fed to expand their balance sheets and pump more money in. But the stock market knows that reluctance is, is totally different than not willing to do it at all. And that's why we saw oil and oil implode and gold trade off heavily because they're not a protected class. If the stock market starts trading off in the 10 to 15 to 20 percent area, the chairman's going to come in and throw some stimulus at it. So to answer your question, we are absolutely slaves to central banks because and we'd love to be slaves to the economy but the economic numbers continue to do nothing but trend lower hello everyone welcome to global government news today is monday june 25th 2012 and i'm darko this is well this isn't my website but my website is ggnonline.com and on youtube it's ddarko2012 and ddarko2013 all right so this first article i have up i'm gonna do something different i'm gonna like kind of read through it a little bit uh more thoroughly so just stick with me, and then I have some, definitely have some interesting articles uh, to come afterwards. So, all right. So, um, this is the title is called "New Global Money Secretly Planned by Elites." This is from AmericanFreed.com uh, from June 21st, 2012, and it says here this first one is from the China Daily. Uh, reform of monetary system. IMF should build multiple reserve currencies, including SDR, and supervise their issuance and cross-border capital flows. Today, the most urgent task for the G20 to reform of the international monetary system. It says here, with sharply fluctuating exchange rates, it's difficult to monitor international capital flows, identify financial risks, blah, 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 right? And save the global system once a crisis happens. So, but it says here that if the current international monetary system cannot successfully be reformed, a new great financial crisis will soon be upon us so the G20 should focus its mission to reform the international monetary system. And then the second one is from the uh, ETF Daily News. Uh, rigged gold market is secret payoff to China. Gold is a reserve currency as far as the market is concerned. It goes on here and says this individual uh, from Sprott Asset Management told Financial Sense News Hour uh, on basically October 2011 an interview. He went on to say that the central banks and the shrewd money know the end game for the dollar will include gold as the backbone of a new global monetary system, which I believe the IMF has a buttload. It says here a system that pre presently finds China sorely lagging gold reserves when compared with the core EU nations and the U.S. So uh, you, you remember me uh, talking about it before. Most of you already know about the you know the whole issue with uh, China and uh, they were issued those bonds in World War II and like every other country and that they never got their gold back so I'm just just you know put that out there just remember it and tie it in with this in the next article it says here the world's new monetary system is being constructed as we write so it says here Western powers that be are secretly funneling gold to China in anticipation of a new monetary system now being constructed. China needs more gold to be part of the planned new world monetary order, or so the Daily News article suggests. So many of you have heard this before, but it says here that the global elites seem to be creating economic chaos in anticipation that they shall then be uh, able to introduce a world currency, possibly one based on a bundle of currencies, and informally backed by gold says this will not happen all at once, but over time, uh, especially if the euro falls, this will surely um, be an elite setback, but that does not mean the enterprise itself will be halted. So I know you guys remember this thing, the super currency. It says here the globalist currency may be run by the IMF. Uh, it says here it could build, be built out of the current special drawing rights, SDR, uh, super currency that the IMF has been attempting to implement around the world. So it says here uh, basically that the China is on board with the Western plans. It says it's been speculated that some of these dynastic families are involved in controlling the great country and work with Western banking families such as the Rothschilds. And basically finishing up here, the article, the China Daily one, 
uh, explains that such reforms would mean granting IMF the ability to conduct open market operations as the world's central bank. So 80% of the gold the world owns doesn't exist. So this would be kind of contrary to uh, the whole uh, China uh, in different countries during World War II exchanging, uh, basically getting issued uh, bonds, treasury bonds and that uh, to hold gold um, here in the West because what the whole conspiracy theory is that there's so much gold that it would actually devalue gold and it would be worth nothing that's how much there is according to that theory so this is saying 80 percent of the gold the world owns doesn't exist so and this is again this is from cnbc so you know there's obviously a, an agenda here it says chris powell secretary and treasurer of the gold antitrust action committee told bernie low on cnbc asia overnight that central banks are continuing to manipulate the gold market as they are interested in supporting government bonds and the dollar and keeping interest rates artificially low. So he warns about paper gold and says that we should try to pers persuade investors that if they are purchasing gold, they had better get real gold metal. And that was crazy. Remember when uh, that happened to, who was it? Gerald Salente, of all people, you know? When he said that he got scanned. I couldn't believe that. I was like, why would he even do that? Why would he not have the the hard gold in his hands. But it says here, the scam Wall Street learned from the mafia. And it says here, along with uh, General Electric, JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, UBS, Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, Wachovia, and more, um, said here they spent the last decade taking part in a scheme to skim billions of dollars from the coffers of cities and small towns across America. The banks achieved this gigantic ripoff by secretly colluding to rig the public bids on municipal bonds, a business worth $3.7 trillion, finish it up by conspiring to lower the interest rates that towns earn on these investments, the bank systematically stole from schools, hospitals, libraries, and nursing homes from virtually every state, district, and territory in the United States, according to one settlement. Yeah, so they did it cleverly, uh, meaning that the victims never even knew they were being cheated, no thumbs were broken or cut off, nobody ended up in a landfill in New Jersey. But it says here, lots and lots of money uh, had basically disappeared. So, uh, moving on here, we have the consequences of the unthinkable. Here is what happens when the euro breaks up. It says here, following from uh, a Spiegel article that summarizes it, three things that will happen simultaneously uh, when the euro basically collapses. Economic output plummets, unemployment rates soars, and consumer prices explode. Yeah, so Zero Hedge says, of course... Uh, is nothing but merely deferred consequences for Europe's partying for over a decade under a unsustainable regime that borrowed from the future. Sound familiar? So it says here, and now the inevitable hangover, in other words, payback is a bitch. You can go in there and say uh, the bleak outlook, forecast of the economic consequences of the breakup, and uh, in the black are the uh, unemployment rates. You got uh, 13 in Belgium, Ireland, 19, France, uh, 15, and Greece, 23. And then uh, right here, I believe these are what, yeah, decline in economic output, are the red ones. And the last one, the white, is the change in the consumer prices. You can notice uh, in Greece it's 18. Germany's resistance may prove fatal to Europe, says George Soros, a nice uh, technocrat globalist elite. Germany's resistance to a banking union. Ooh, resistance to a banking union. I thought it was just about a stimulus and a sluggish economy. No, it's about consolidation of power, right? The banking union that we were talking about and, a st and stimulus measures is in the way of a solution to Europe's debt crisis and could turn this week's meeting of the region's leaders in a fias into a fiasco according to the billionaire investor Soros. This is however unrealistic or unreasonable Soros said adding that a political fiscal and banking union uh, have to be developed together step by step. And then you have Germany's finance minister, Schobel, says no to throwing money at euro crisis. He says it will not solve the problem. We have to fight the causes, he said. Anyone who believes that money alone or bailouts or any other solutions or monetary policy at the European Central Bank that will never resolve the problem, the causes have to be resolved. He dismissed advice from uh, President Obama who called on Europe to do more to fight the crisis. Mr. Obama should focus on reducing the American deficit, he said. It's higher than the Euros. Then we have starving Greeks queue for food in, their th in the thousands as debt-wracked country finally forms a coalition government. This is uh, for 
desperate people receive food handouts from Crete's farmers. And then you can see a picture out here. Hundreds of poverty-stricken Greeks are uh, queuing, they keep using that word, for free vegetable handouts. And then moving to the UK, we have petrol prices will rise again as motorists must accept higher taxes to help clear Britain's debt, insists the transport minister. So it says here a rise will be, I guess, three pounds, two pence per liter from August. So it means that already cash trapped families will have to fork out more than one pound, 40 pence a liter for petrol, most of which is tax. Next up, capital controls hit Spain. Government laws prohibit cash transactions over 2,500 euros, minimum fine of 10,000 euros for failure to report foreign accounts. Then we have this, a sign of cities getting desperate. Advertise on a fire truck. How about a manhole cover? Cash trap cities are making it easier for you to get your message out. And it says here, several cities in need of money are selling at advertising space on manhole covers, fire hydrants, and fire trucks, among other places. So after you pay taxes, because you have to have a government and you gotta pay taxes and you gotta have roads, you gotta have government to pay for the roads, remember? You're gonna have KFC uh, logos showing up on manholes in Indiana, Kentucky to help fill potholes. Hmm. So where the hell is all that money going, right? The banking mafia, that's what. War veteran sells bravery medal he won for looting Nazis to help pay for grand grandson's uh, university fees. Now this is what? Bill Pickering, so an 88-year-old. Then we have veteran get surprising response that they're selling his army medal on eBay. So another veteran selling selling his uh, medal on eBay basically to get money. So it's kind of a sign of the times, you know. There's a Dallas mom uh, accused of trying to sell baby for four thousand dollars in classified ad. Not the first time I've heard this. I think there's been a couple articles like this or stories of it in the past year or so. The woman was arrested on charges of child abandonment after an interested buyer got cold feet and called police. She says, I can no longer care for him the way he needs to be cared for. The ad reads, it says, we are living in a woman's shelter now and working with an adoption agency. So there's an adoption fee they have to set up. I believe it's $6,500. Thank you and God bless. So she could have actually met the owners, whoever would have took, you know, I hate to use that word, the owners, right? Um, but she, she would have actually met who her, who her child was going to go to. But instead, see, the kidnappers, the CPS, the baby's now in custody by Child Protective Services being molested by a social worker who will then be pimped out and possibly trafficked, right? So that's, that's the sad fate of this, of statism and how people can't um, get by, usually because of state intervention, state actions, usually government monetary policy. And speaking of the state, uh, you know, there's some people like Stefan Molyneux who say it's the most immoral organization in the world, right? Poverty is not an excuse for crime as morality is the biggest factor. So as people's standard of livings are shot down the sewer drain pipe, right, um, due to central banks and all these people at the top, siphoning off people's wealth like a mafia and then of course you have the taxes which is if you don't pay them you're going to get shot that's a very moral moral thing to help pay for potholes that they're not going to go towards so if you can't provide for your family um you can't find a job you can't grow your own food because you know you're getting all your your, your stuff chopped down by the city because it doesn't look pretty uh you're going to eventually have to steal it says uh in fact uh, in urban environments, they actually trigger young people to commit crimes. So they're talking about ghettos usually, urban environments, blacks. So to avoid stealing, right, um, and they can't get a job in the ghetto because there's no jobs, they may want to actually try to work for their money. They'll sell drugs. Well, unfortunately, they're competing with the CIA, intelligence agencies, and the police and dealing drugs. That's their competition. So, you know, it's kind of a bad deal for them too which is why there's been a huge increase in violent, uh, not violence, but just murders. The murders have been horrible in Chicago right now, and that's why uh, the competition of these gangs, this, uh, the city of Chicago wants to make it uh, more strict for guns, you know, so that you can defend yourself. So that's very moral as well. They take away your right to defend yourself. Can you afford to die in America? An infographic, you can go in there and check it out. Uh, just type it in. It's from blacklistedradio.com. So a lot of people are pre-planning their own funerals. And cremation is becoming very popular. Look at that, from 1960 to 2010, how much has gone up. A family's horror is it reveals a co-op funeral fi uh, firm piled naked bodies up in a grim warehouse morgue. The news found a casket lid was removed to cram four bodies into a van which left elderly women's nose nearly touching the roof. 
it's a big business and you know you get all that formaldehyde and that pumped into your body it's just disgusting it's a desecration kind of like autopsies so just stick me in a cardboard wooden box thank you